let's check out Kubuntu 23.10. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel. And I'm super excited today. I wanted to dive into Kubuntu 23.10. And I'm sure you guys have heard that Ubuntu 23.10 actually came out. And what actually happens a little time after that, the different flavors of Ubuntu start releasing their version of it as well. And one of the most beautiful versions of Ubuntu is the Kubuntu line, which is KDE desktop environment. And so I want to run through it and just show you guys some of the changes and what it looks like with this new release. And I know it's not a long-term supported release, but a lot of people are interested into the new features that are coming out for the next release, which is 24.04, which will come out in April of next year. And so this is that preview of that version. So now let's go down and hop over to the website right fast so you guys can check it out. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, as you can see, I'm at Kubuntu.org. And of course I have the link down in the description of the video. But like I said, this official Ubuntu spin brings you the power of the KDE Plasma desktop. And it's one of the most refined desktop environments in the open source world. Now, based on my research and following it, because I don't use KDE on a daily basis, I typically use XFCE, but I always liked the way KDE actually looked, how the design of it is, and especially it's easier for new users that are transitioning over to Windows. KDE Plasma, you know, hits the mark with that. But Plasma has come a long way, and it's now known for its rock solid stability, efficiency, and user friendliness, like I just talked about. About. And in this release, you'll find KDE Plasma 5.27.8. And this is not offering just the usual bug fixes, but also some subtle refinement. Now, just like Ubuntu, Kubuntu is shipped with updated software like LibreOffice 7.6, Firefox, I believe 117, and Thunderbird 115, which is super dope. I really like the changes of Thunderbird, and I use Thunderbird on my XFCE desktop environment. But of course, the underlying kernel version is 6.5 and as you know from my Ubuntu video this kernel version is a solid foundation for your system so let me go on and show you guys how to download it right fast so if we click here under download you'll see the release right here up at the top and then you can also click here to see the release notes and it basically redirects you to the Ubuntu wiki page you can check it out and this covers a lot of what I've already talked about but I know you guys are excited to see it just like I am. So let's go down and get it installed. But all you gotta do is click the download button. It'll download there. So let's go down and switch over to my virtual machine so I can get it installed. All right, so I got my virtual machine built out. I believe I gave it eight gigabytes of RAM and also gave it like two cores from the processor on my virtual server. But here we go, here is the installer. So let's just walk through the process. When I booted up the ISO, they give you two options to test out Kubuntu or you can go right into the installer and what i did was click the test and got to the desktop so i can fix the display settings that way it looks right while i'm recording and then all i did was click on the installation script on the desktop but anyway let's go down and go through the installer you first start off with your language now the next thing is the keyboard layout you select whatever you need and you can also test it out but let's go down and hit continue there and then there's actually one option here now the normal install which comes with a web browser utility these office software plus additional internet applications and media players and that's all you really need because if you're installing Kubuntu you want it to work you want it to use all the tools that comes with it or all the applications that actually comes with it so all you have to do is click that normal install and then you can download your updated
updates as well as install third party software, which I'm not going to do this time. So let's go down here, continue. But the next thing is setting up our disk configuration. They have three options. So guided use entire disk, guided use entire disk and set up LVM. And then also guided use entire disk and set up encrypted LVM. So that's what this option right here for is you to type in your password for the encryption. If you select the use entire disk and set encrypted, and then you can also manually do it. Just select manually and then select your drive and you're good to go. But let's go down and hit install now. It's gonna go down and install in the background. It's gonna set up our disk and start the installation process by copying over all the files to the hard drive, all that good stuff. But we have to continue out the installation process, which is setting up our location. It automatically picked it up. So I'm gonna hit continue there, then go in and create our user account. So let's go down and type Josh, and then let's go down here, type in our password, type in our password twice. And then you can also name the PC, which we're gonna just name it Ubuntu. And let's hit continue. And also, you wanna make sure you require the password on login. You know, well, I always recommend people do that. Don't do the login automatically. Hit continue there. And then it's gonna go through the install. It'll just give you some, some pop-ups just talking about Kubuntu and the community and all that good stuff. So you can check it out. But as you can see, the installation process is super simple. It's very straightforward. And so I'll be back when it actually finishes. All right, so the installation is complete. All you gotta do is hit the restart now button or you can continue ch checking out Kubuntu right here from the live via so but let's go down hit restart wait for it to come back and I'll be back in a sec all right so we logged into our new installation and I want to go through a couple things on the system just to show you guys a little bit of what's new now one thing they did change uh and this was based on me reading uh they updated the music player as well as the media player so Eliza that's the music player I meant to do a video on Eliza a while back because i heard great things about this actual music player like the look and the design of it and of course i ain't got no music on here to actually listen to but you can check it out you know for yourself when you get it installed but this is super cool to see you know what i'm saying i still use vlc as well as clementine as a music player on my system i just haven't updated it to any of the new ones but this is the haruna media player this is awesome as well that's a new addition to this version of coupon 2 but yeah you can play all your media from here you can play music movies all that good stuff under here boom but let's go down and go to our terminal the console and then let's go down and type you name just check out the kernel version right fast so you guys can see but it does ship with 6.5 so that's good to see and let's go down and exit we don't have to well let's go down and show you guys how to update it but just like any other ubuntu distro just use the app package manager but i just wanted to type it out for you but what i'm gonna do is go to the software center just show you guys what it looks like over there but this is essentially how you update your system so sudo apt update and then you can also run in tandem sudo apt upgrade and that will upgrade your system for you so I'm not gonna run that, just wanted to show it to you guys, but let's go into the software center right fast. And then we can also go through the settings in a couple seconds as well. So let's go down and pull the software center up to the top. And one good thing, you know, if you look down here at the bottom, that's where you, you can update your system as well. So I'll run the updates here. We can refresh it right fast just to verify that it does have all the latest updates. I think it did that when I uh, booted into the operating system or logged into the operating system. It checked right away, but it doesn't hurt to check again. But you always want to check first. And then once it finished checking, then you can update the system or upgrade all the packages that are there. All right, so let's go down and hit update. It's going to ask you for your sudo password. Just type that in right fast. Press OK. It'll go through and run all the updates for you on the system. So it's not that much but i wanted to go over to our system settings just to show you guys how to use it right fast but as you can see super simple if you use kde then you understand how this works it got all your options in here as far as appearance you can change things to the dark theme and actually let's click on it and see what happens and hit apply and that'll change everything dark and then you got your animation speed so that's basically just the animations which which is not all that great on this virtual machine, you know what I'm saying? But that's mainly for the animations. You can make it instant or you can slow down your animation speed. And also a lot, a couple other settings right up in there, behavior settings, all that good stuff. And you can also go right here to workspace behavior and that'll give you some of the other features that you can play around with as far as desktop effects, all that good stuff. 
uh, window manager you can go in here make changes to the window manager and I won't go through everything but shortcuts startup shutdown programs notifications kind of like this you can adjust that where it says system notification helper system restore is needed you can adjust how that the user account so you can click in here you can add a new user you can adjust the user that you have wallet online accounts uh, you can also give user feedback here you can turn that on if you want to contribute with allowing them to receive information about your system but one thing about it they don't collect personal information they just collect information so they can improve on the operating system and then network settings hardware settings you know a whole bunch of other settings down up in there we won't go through it too far but as you can see our system is up to date but i want to show you guys you can install all your software from under here and just to show you guys the version but it's discover 5.27 so there we go and let's go on and close it right fast but i want to check and see if that version of firefox is the actual version that's installed and we can go in here go to help and then about firefox and yes 118 so we got the latest version now ultimately kubuntu 23.10 is all about delivering a reliable just works Linux experience. And it's a fantastic choice for both new users to Linux as well as people that have been using Linux for a long time. And so if you've been contemplating giving Linux a try, I definitely recommend this flavor of Ubuntu. Cause like I just showed you, it's super easy to use and it will make that transition as easy as possible. So that wraps up my overview of Kubuntu 23.10. But before I sign off, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell to stay updated with the latest Linux content. And if you have any questions about Kubuntu 23.10 or anything Linux related, feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments below. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep protecting.